One thing I do want to address while I'm in this tunnel is uh, I want to talk to you guys about crop. Specifically, sensor crop. What does it mean? Because one thing I've noticed, and it's something I got entirely wrong too when I first started looking at the a uh, M6 Mark II, and also crop sensors in general, is I didn't understand what that meant. But I want to talk to you about what it is, what the difference is, how to sort of figure out what lenses to use, and also why none of it matters. Right, for all my complaining about the things that have gone wrong with all my trips to take photos, one thing that's happened that has gone kind of right today, now that the rain has cleared up, is the tunnel is open. And last time I was here, this tunnel was closed, so we're going to go inside that tunnel and basically do the walk in this direction, at least for a while, and see where we end up. So this tunnel was built in about the 1900s and it was opened in about 1905. This was the train tunnel that the trains would transport the gold from the gold mining through and then up to the big smoke, to the city. Uh, it was, yeah, like I said, it opened in 1905. It closed in 1978, which was the year I was born. Coincidence? Uh, you tell me. It is lit, as you can see by these orange lights. It's quite an amazing looking tunnel. It's about a kilometre, just over a kilometre long. And as you can tell, from all these dings and dongs behind me, it's very popular for kids on bikes to go riding through the tunnel now that it's open. But it is part of the Windows Walk and you can do a big loop around Crang Happy Gorge through this tunnel. So it's quite, um, it's quite the attraction. And it is kind of neat to walk through an old tray tunnel. Regardless of uh, whether you like trains or not, tunnels are cool. Just in case you're wondering how the M6 Mark, oh geez, doesn't handle focusing in the dark very well, but if you're wondering how the M6 Mark II does with low light, I'm running it on uh, 2800 ISO at the moment. Um, so yeah, this is what it looks like, I suppose you would say. It's not bad. I mean, it's tracking my eyes, but it's not necessarily doing the greatest job of focusing all the time. One thing I do want to address while I'm in this tunnel is uh, I want to talk to you guys about crop, specifically APS-C crop, in other words sensor crop. What does it mean? Because one thing I've noticed, and it's something I got entirely wrong too when I first started looking at the a uh, M6 Mark II, and also crop sensors in general, is I didn't understand what that meant. Better do this in the light. I'll come back to you in the light, hang on. Everywhere I go there's traffic, it's supposed to be out in the woods, taking a nice walk and all I get is uh, traffic and waterfalls making all the noise. Nevertheless, we're out of the tunnel so you can actually see me this time. Now crop sensors. This camera, the M6 Mark II, as you will probably be well aware, it has a APS-C sensor which is a crop sensor. It has a 1.6 times crop. What does that mean? Simple. It means that when compared to a full frame, and a full frame is equivalent to 35mm film, this sensor is 1.6 times smaller. Where did this wind come from? At least I get to check out how well my um, dead cat works. Oh, I found a great spot for a photo. It's incredibly windy, but um, this looks pretty cool. So I've snapped the photos. 
with the uh, the moss and the water, hoping not to get any cars. But it's incredibly windy as you can see. I got too much hair for this level of wind. With the APS-C sensor, it is a crop sensor. There's no escaping that, no matter how hard you try. No matter what you do, you will always have a crop. So that means if you grab Canon's Nifty 50 and stick this on your M6 Mark II, you have to take the focal length, which is 50 mil, times it by 1.6, and that tells you what your field of view is. The focal length itself doesn't change, which means the kind of picture you get, the barrel distortion, the uh, the way the light works for the most part is going to be very very similar regardless it doesn't matter but you can't avoid that crop it is going to give you the field of view of an 80 millimeter lens which means you basically just have to stand further back if you want a full frame field of view that's pretty common knowledge and I think we all understand that that if we use EF glass we have to times it by 1.5 to figure out what our field of view is focal length though the distance here between the sensor and the glass, that, that doesn't change. It's always going to be 50mm on this lens. Just like if I grab the kit lens, which is the 15 to 45, it's always going to be a 15 to 45 focal length. The mistake that we make, or that a lot of people make, and what I made, is assuming that that focal length doesn't have a full frame equivalent. You see, it does. 15 to 45 is about a 24 to 70 well, 24 to 75, see, 15, 15 I know is 24, so, so 45 times 1.6 is 72, 72. This has a similar field of view to a 24 to 72 uh, lens on a full frame body. Where the difference comes in with native lenses, with APS-C built lenses, is how the light is focused. Because if you're shooting with a piece of glass meant for an EF sensor, for a full frame sensor, not only do you have to multiply the focal length to figure out your field of view, you also have to multiply your f-stop by 1.6. So, for example, the 50mm shoots at 1.8, so 1.8 at its most open times 1.6 equals 2.88. So it's still going to give you creamy bokeh, it's still going to give you the blurry background you're looking for. But there is a crop factor involved with how the light works. Okay, so if focal length doesn't change, then why does the crop really matter? It really matters depending on what you're shooting, or what sort of field of view you want when you're shooting. For example, if you want to shoot uh, a nice wide angle for a vlog, and you want a 16mm sort of field of view, you're going to have to buy a 10 millimeter focal length that'll give you times 1.6 the same as a 16 mil just like this 16 mil i'm shooting on is approximately the same as 25 mil piece of glass in terms of field of view in terms of everything else it functions just like a 16 mil focal length is the same the way that light works is essentially the same the difference being that this is a design for the APS-C sensor on the Canon it is a native M piece of glass so the light is focused in so you're not going to get any vignetting you're going to get nice uh, even light all the way through the frame and it's going to let in as much light as possible that's where native lenses work best that's the same with EF-S glass you're still going to have the same crop factor and everything except that the light is going to be focused for an APS-C sensor so you're going to get a sharper image than you would out of an EF piece of glass because with an EF piece of glass the light is shooting past the sensor and so you're essentially not only getting a crop and getting a slightly less bokeh as a result but you're also going to be getting slightly less perceivable pixels so how does that work so how that plays out is essentially a numbers game in terms of resolution how big you want to blow up your photo that's what it really comes down to if you're shooting in raw and you're getting the maximum size and the maximum amount of light in uh, then it's not going to make a huge difference to you the fact that you're perceivably using less megapixels so for example this is a 3.2 megapixel sensor so if I use the EF 50 millimeter glass I'm essentially going to be cutting my megapixel equivalency down from 32 megapixels to about 20 megapixels which means that if I'm shooting with any EF glass I'm getting about the equivalent as a full frame wood with 20 megapixels which is still pretty good 
but that's why you'll find if you're shooting on something like the uh, M50 which only has about 24 megapixels to begin with you're going to get slightly less sharp images than you would on the newer APS-C sensor So that's why it all matters. Your focal length will never change on an APS-C sensor, but your, your field of view will. Your aperture will if you're shooting on uh, EF glass. However, if you're shooting on EFS or, or M glass, that sort of uh, crop factor has already been applied to your aperture numbers. So you're going to get basically what it tells you you're going to be getting. Perceivable pixels is a trickier one. It really only matters if you're trying to make your image is really large. However, if you're shooting on a lower megapixel APS-C sensor, you're likely to get softer images than you would on a newer APS-C sensor or on a full frame sensor. Why doesn't any of this matter? Because it, it just doesn't. If you take photos and you put them on Instagram, they're so small it doesn't matter if it's a bit softer than a full frame piece of glass. It also doesn't matter if your bokeh is slightly less blurry than it would be on a full frame sensor because at the end of the day when people see your image and when you look at your image it's going to be how you wanted to make it it's going to be based on the settings you used to achieve the look that you wanted to achieve whether it was blown out because you decided to pump up the ISO for a, for an effect to give it like a grainy effect or or if you decided to uh, if you wanted it to be super sharp so you made sure that your aperture was really dialed in to be nice and sharp to be at like f4 to f8 because at the end of the day people don't know whether you used ef glass whether you use efs glass whether you shot on full frame whether you shot on aps-c and with the new aps-c sensors in the m6 mark ii and similar cameras whether it be canon or sony with a higher megapixel count we're grabbing more light they're getting closer and closer to full frame equivalency in many areas will they ever be the same will they be, ever be as good no i mean look at the r5 that just came out that thing is a monster of a sensor but all the sensors are improving over time and so the end result the photos and the video that you get is just going to improve over time with newer and newer cameras regardless of what you choose so the only thing you ever really have to worry about is when you're choosing a lens for a job if you're shooting portraiture, you want anywhere between 32, 36 mil to get a 50 mil-ish equivalency. If you're going to be shooting um, at 50 mil and have that 50 mil look, you're just going to have to stand further back. If you're going to be vlogging and you want a really wide shot or you want a nice field of view, that's going to come into effect as well. So basically you need to choose the glass based on what you want to shoot the look you want but once you've got that piece of glass what really matters is your technique how you frame the photo how you put your composition together uh, all that sort of thing that's what really matters is there too much noise or not enough noise all of that sort of stuff the technique is what really matters not the glass so use the 1.6 crop to work out your field of view as i said otherwise it doesn't really matter in my opinion let me pick this up. Hopefully I've managed to piece this together so it makes some level of sense to you. It can be very confusing. I had it completely wrong when I started off with APS-C sensors coming from basically film to the M6 Mark II. It made it very difficult for me to get my head around at first. What was crop and everything. So I hope I've cleared some of it up. If I've got any of it wrong though and you know better, please, I mean, jump into the comments below let me know what I've got wrong. This is a learning process for all of us. If uh, you're watching this and you actually learned something, please give me a, a like, a thumbs up. That would be amazing. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed already, please join the subscription crew. Subscribe to this channel for more videos on the M6 Mark II and on photography and on my adventures. I guess that's all I have to say. Do you know what's great about using a fixed ND filter opposed to a variable one? You can fit the lens cap on nice and easily. So um, I'm going to do that now and I'll see you guys real, real soon. Bye now.